Yeah. Yeah, come here, Paul. Yeah, uh, Jamie, it feels like with a, a couple of days to um, give a, a considered assessment of the game from Friday night. Have you been able to, to put your finger on exactly why the first half performance wasn't up to scratch? Yeah, listen, I know. Um, I think we all realised that the first half wasn't good enough um, and we will assess that and, and obviously make improvements as we see. Um, but I think coming out second half, we, we've shown what we can do and um, we can put it up to teams um, like Iceland and, and we can kind of make those improvements um, as we came out second half and we showed. Um, so I think it's just kind of assessing, listen, why it went like that um, and we can just improve and kind of go from there and, and come next game kind of make it right then. Yeah, are you, are you feeling quite positive now having come out of it with a, a good second half performance and the fact that you've got, a, I suppose, a chance to put it right now again on Tuesday? Yeah, I think it's always good when you obviously kind of react uh, to, to that first half with the second half that we did. We came out and we knew, listen, we're better than that um, and, we, and we showed that we are um, scoring the two goals and, and we could have scored more. We created a lot of chances um, so we just kind of need to have that mentality of starting the game like that and um, having the confidence and belief that, listen, we, we can, we can um, put it up to these teams. Yeah, Vera has obviously put a, a bit of faith in you, Jamie, since she came in. Um, how have you found working with her? Are, are you confident that she's capable of getting the best out of this team? Yeah, I mean, Vera's great. Her experience uh, speaks speaks alone. Um, um, she's great experience. And coming in here, she's given a lot to the team. Um, and obviously, the backroom staff, Eileen as well, has, has helped a lot. Um, and of course, I'm, I'm grateful for her. She's given me the chance to play to play at senior level. Um, and obviously, just playing for Ireland is, is a dream for me. And I'm proud to always wear to, to wear the green jersey and um, I've had a few years where I just I, di I didn't get to the senior level and obviously Vera believed in me and I'm grateful for that um, and for the chance to play. Yeah and you were obviously flying the flag for the, the women's national league in, in the starters lineup on Friday can you sum up how much of a, a step up is involved when you go from a you know a fairly comfortable win against that long town last weekend to playing against the 17th best team in the world and how much of a challenge is involved in adapting to that, especially in, in a different role as well? Yeah, listen, it's always going to be a step up, uh, senior level, senior footballer, um, international is always a, a step up, um, but I mean, I think I just have to adapt to that and kind of give the best I can and obviously playing in, in the rifle uh, wing back position, uh, that's a change as well, but I think just for me, I know my role and, and I just kind of go from there and I always kind of give 100% whether it's playing for my club or country and, and, that, and that's what, what I believe in. Yeah, and just last bit for me, Jamie, um, for you personally, do you see games like these as an opportunity to put yourself in the shop window for, for going abroad and playing full time? Is that one of the objectives for you long term? Yeah, it would be for me. Um, I've always had the kind of dream and ambition to play professional football and hopefully that, that will um, come true one day. And but I think just right now, just focusing on these these games uh, that are coming up. But if that comes in the near future, that'll be that'll be great then. Thanks, Jamie. Best of luck Tuesday. Thank you. Uh, Aaron Clark. Hey, Jamie. Um, must have been nice the other day to play in front of fans as well for the first time in a while. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, obviously Iceland have their iconic drum um, and and their kind of chance as well so it was great to hear that and have that atmosphere at a game again so it was obviously it was good for us on the pitch as well and in particular you look just closer to home your game with for Shelburne on the 26th is a test event for crowds back home so it's, it's giving you a little bit of an appetite of you know trying to get people back in get people in behind you yeah it's great to, to have the fans back and and obviously it's been a long time coming and um, it's obviously like a 12th person on the pitch you know when you hear the the people chanting and and then obviously if you, if you see your family like you said the the game against um for shells is that there'll be people there and it's great to have people people around and around the game just gives that atmosphere um and stuff like that so it's good just on the iceland game a little bit um in the in the first half in particular they were they were quite physical something that we had ireland had to readapt you being involved in the personal training industry how have you sort of adapted your game the last say year or so, especially with lockdown and physical fitness? Because it's we know it's something that you would have a keen interest in. Yeah, I think me personally as a player, I would kind of consider myself being a physical. I get I like to get stuck in, and um, so I like that aspect of the game. And um, so if obviously I like that against Iceland, there like they were a physical, big, strong team. But I love I love playing against that and. Um, yeah, but being a personal trainer as well, I'd have stuff I work on as well, whether it's strength work or 
as well, like during lockdown, like we, we trained a lot alone, um, which was difficult to adapt to. Obviously, we're a team environment. Um, but I think we just kind of, everyone knew, listen, there'll be light at the end of the tunnel. We'll get there together. So there was plans in place and obviously programs set out for individual uh, players. So that kind of kept you going and kept you on the right path. In terms of in terms of yourself in the international team, obviously you played a right wing back, you played it in centre midfield. You have a lot of versatility, but would you like to maybe just have the one position or are you, are you open to moving around a, a lot more if needs be? Yeah, listen, I'll play wherever wherever the manager needs needs me. Um, I'll play any position. I think I've shown that, like right, right wing back, centre mid as well. And um, wherever the team needs needs me, I'll play. Just kind of that's the type of player I am. I'll just get stuck in, do my work, and and that's it. Last thing for me, just in terms of Iceland, you've had a little bit more freedom. You haven't been confined in the hotel for the entire thing. That must be nice as well. Yeah, it always is, but I mean, I think those protocols and stuff are in place for a reason. Um, so that's obviously, we'll go by them um, strictly as well um, because of what's going on. But yeah, it's, it's been good. Cheers, Jamie. No problem, thanks. Ryan Gregory. Hey, can you yep. see me all right? Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Demi, you mentioned about um, sort of uh, going abroad and uh, going full time is sort of something that's sort of on your agenda potentially, but not something you're thinking about at the moment. Is it something that is you speak about with the uh, players within the squad, people like Grace Maloney, I am thinking Nifahi? Is that something you speak with the other girls about what it's like over in the WSL to get a taste of what it could potentially be like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the girls are, are great. Like, any questions you have, they'll tell you everything you need to know about it. And, yeah, I'd speak to a few of them, and obviously Katie as well, being at Arsenal. Um, they'd help you a lot. And any questions you have, they're, they're pretty open to telling you what it's all about and, and how they train and their kind of regime of their days and, and match days and stuff like that. So they're all pretty helpful when it comes to that. And with that sort of, I guess, lure that opportunity potentially being out there does that give you an extra added motivation to push yourself further when you're in camp such as this yeah absolutely um as i said previous i mean it's always a dream of mine to uh, become a professional footballer um but as i said i'm just kind of i always try to give 100 percent effort um and then obviously if something comes about from that then then brilliant um but i just keep my feet on the ground and just keep pushing keep giving 100% and in, in everything I do, whether it's training or, or a game. So, yeah. Awesome, Jamie. Cheers. No problem. Thanks. Okay, Aiden, uh, we'll switch to the dialogue section. Aiden, good morning. Hi, Jamie. Hello. Um, just, just one from me, really. There was a lot of talk before the first game about the recent run. I know you didn't play in all the games, but trying to match the, the results of the performances and to, to, to not just take a performance you have to match the results. Is that mood still there that you can't just kind of say that well it was a good performance but we lost? Is that something that's, that's there in the camp? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we always go out to win a game um, and obviously the game against Iceland, I mean, we didn't start um, the best we could um, but as I said, second half we came out and we showed how well we can play um, but we're all under the assumption and the impression that we can go out and beat um, these teams and um, I think it's just about doing that now and, and we all know that listen we have to kind of get it done but yeah we know we can go out and beat be teams and just about performing on the day. Because you need to learn lessons as well we know from, from the last campaign how individual moments can, can cost you. Is, is it about you know we talk about learning those but actually putting those into place on the pitch and, and in, in a match like this on, on Tuesday to say we can't afford to make those mistakes, say, when, when, when Georgia comes to Dublin? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a great test for us, um, these two games against Iceland, um, like their top opposition as well, and this is where we need to improve. We need to kind of cut out mistakes and going forward into the World Cup qualifiers, we need to know um, what we're doing and, and how we can get there as well. Great. Thanks, Jay. Thank, Thank you. you.